I'm Johnny K. This is part 11, installing the pistons. Well, we gotta make sure our cylinder bores are nice and clean. What I like to do, I like to use some white paper towel, some lacquer thinner, and I'll scrub them cylinders. You'll be amazed. You pull out the towel, there'll be some dirt on there, oil, honing oil. Can't just, can't go like that. You really gotta scrub it, put some muscle into it. And you'll be surprised at the dirt that comes off. So keep doing it until you pull that paper towel out and there's no more black on it. Then I'll do one more clean, but I'll use a lint-free rag with a little lacquer thinner. Go around with the lint-free rag, and you know you got it spotless, and there's no little microfibers from that paper towel hanging onto your cylinder bores. Then you gotta take some oil, and you gotta oil up the cylinder walls. You can squirt some in the cylinder bores, then you use your hand, squirt some on your hand, rub it all around. Do all the cylinder bores. And I just wipe it around the cylinder. Before I put the piston in, is I'll take the time to take the lower rod cap, I'll pop out the bearing, and I'll just make sure that this bearing is lower. I do that to each piston before I put it in. You can go ahead and put a assembly loop on the lower bearing, on the upper bearing, and put some assembly loop on the crank journal. One thing I wanted to show you too is when you put the assembly grease on or assembly lube on the bearing, Make sure you don't get any on the horizontal joint on the mating surface, that can throw off your reading. So you just want it in the bearing. You don't want any grease out here on the flat. You wanna keep this dry. Before we put this piston in, we're gonna oil the rings, squirt some oil on there, just a thin coat. I'll squirt the wrist pin, a little oil there, that side, clump it around, a little oil in here, this side. Squirt some there, just a little bit, not too much. Then I go ahead, squirt the rings. Okay, then I squirt the piston squirt. Piston skirt. <laughs> squirt it here too. And you wanna go ahead, just rub it, rub it around, rub this around. What I like to do, I like to take the rings. And I actually like to turn the rings back and forth. Just make sure the oil's getting all, all in there. We got that all covered. Let's take one look at the piston ring orientation. I'll take a look at the piston. I'll look where it says front. Get your piston pointing frontwards. Look at your instruction sheet. It tells you how to place the rings 180 out from each other. Just follow your instructions on your rings. And you'll be good to go. Okay, then we'll hold it front is that way. And we'll just check our rings. Top ring goes this way. The second ring. 180 out from that and then you just have to rotate the oil rings top and bottom okay so we got the orientation we're ready we're good to put it in one thing to note on their connecting rod one side is chamfered the other side is flat the chamfered side goes up against the crank fillet the flat side of the connecting rod goes against the flat side of the other connecting rod. One last thing that I do before I insert the piston in the cylinder bore is I want to protect my crank journal from the connecting rod bolts. You don't want the rod bolts hitting the crank journal and putting a nick in the journal. So you can take either rubber hose or Cleveland makes these little rubber booties to just come off, squeeze them, put them on. Once again, it's just cheap insurance. All right, now you're ready to put your piston in. Have fun. Just to let you know, they make a couple of different piston ring compressing tools. Some are universal and some are bore Pacific. This is actually, uh, it's only made for one size. Since my bore size is 4.280, I got a Summit 4.280 tapered ring compressor. And these work nice. The only downside is 
They're only made for one size. They also make universal ones like this. It's kind of a hose clamp style. And these work too, but I prefer these. After using both, I just prefer using this one. And that's it, but the choice is up to you. We had our crank, we rotated our crank so the journal was all the way at the bottom. You want it as far away from the connecting rod as possible. So rotate your crank, to make sure the journal is all the way down. We got front of piston, it's front of motor. Now, ready to put our piston in. And that's how you install a piston. Now that we brought the piston up, see how the little rubber booties protect the crank from getting any nicks on it? If you know, see the little tang here? Right there? Okay, there's a tang in the rod. And then there's a tang in the rod cap, the lower cap. Tang always goes to tang. Okay, what I like to do is I'll apply a little oil to the threads. I also apply a little oil face of the nut that goes down. And since these are 3 8 bolts, these will get torqued to 50 foot pounds of torque. What I like to do is I'll just snug them up a little bit. And then I'm going to go onto the other cylinders, install the pistons, roll it, install the pistons. Then I come back and do a final torque. Do that same procedure for one, three, five, and seven, and we'll rotate the block and do two, four, six, and eight. Okay, now that we got our pistons all in, now I'm going to torque them. You want to be pulling the Connecting rod against the uh, crankshaft. You do not want to stand off to the side and torque this way because you're, you're moving the connecting rod side to side. You want it wedged up against the crank. Then when you go to torque this one, torque it so you're pulling this connecting rod against. I like to use two feeler gauges in between the connecting rods. And what that does is it keeps everything equal. When I'm torquing, the connecting rod's not twisting. Again, you don't have to do, do this. You can go ahead and just torque them. But that's just something I learned from a guy and I thought it was a good idea. Okay, that's done. So continue tightening up your connecting rods using the feeler gauges. And remember, you never want to stand on the side of your motor to torque, it's always front or back. Now that all of our connecting rods are tight and torqued to the final torque, go ahead and rotate your motor over, spin it a couple times. Go ahead and let's check the mains one more time. We're good. Now, roll your motor over and you want to inspect your cylinder bores. Check them all out, make sure there's no deep scratches. You can go ahead and turn it over a little bit. All right. So that's it. We are done for today.
Here's the feeler gauge tip of today. When using feeler gauges, for example, I want to use four thousandths right here. Double check to make sure you see three, four, five thousandths. Because if not, you just go, oh, here's four, and you stick it in, you're going to get around reading. You know why? Oh, look at that. Five was stuck behind four. So always look at your feeler gauges just to double check that you can see the numbers on either side of four. So we're using four, you want to see three. I got the four, you want to see five. And you're good to go. That's the feeler gauge tip for today. Okay, now that our pistons are in, our connecting rods are torqued, we rotated it a couple times, we rechecked our main caps, we checked each cylinder board to make sure there's no scoring from the rings, we're good to go. Now I want to check the resistance of the rotating assembly with my torque wrench. So the rotating assembly resistance of torque should be between 35 to 40 foot pounds. So I got my torque wrench set and let's just try it. Okay, it's clicking, increased it by about five, clicking, increased it by about five, clicking, low five. Okay, she's starting to roll. Take it through one cycle. Make sure your torque wrench doesn't click at all, that it doesn't get hung up. And if uh, number one cylinder's almost all the way up, okay, we're good. Let's see what we got. I got 40 foot pounds of torque. So I'm good. So it's between 35 and 40. Now that we're done for tonight, don't forget to put your engine bag over your motor. You don't want any dust or dirt to get into your motor that'll wreck your motor. So remember, put your engine bag over your motor and have a good night.